Hey everyone, welcome to our scale mail workshop. Today we're going to go through the basic tools that you need for scale mail and how to do edging and kind of some simple tips and tricks on when you do a vest. So first of all, these are the tools you need. These are split ring pliers. You can buy them on Amazon for like $10. Um, you're going to be using uh, split rings, so like keychain rings and they tend to really hurt when they get underneath your thumbnail so I highly recommend getting these. I have normal jewelers pliers, needle nose, and a pair of long reach pliers. I find they work really handy when you get into nitty gritty or when you have to uh, repair any rings that have fallen off, damaged, or you've missed. I also have my handy dandy dental pick tool. All right, so right now I am using uh, the Ring Lords large scales. When you look on their website, you'll also find that they have split rings that are designed just for these. Yeah. You can use brass, you can use anodized aluminum, titanium, whatever. The process is all the same. Yeah. When you first start out, I like to start off with a big keychain ring. Uh, these do come handy later when you have a big sheet of scale mail and you want to lay them all out. You can thread a dowel in there or something and kind of pull everything nice and taut. All right, so we'll start by opening up one of these key rings. And take your split ring pliers and kind of put the little hook right inside of the, ski, the ring and open it just like that. All right. Now you take your scale, you're gonna lay down the ring. You're just gonna thread it on to the right hand side of that scale. Okay, you just have it open enough that'll accept another scale. Okay, we're gonna go back to that first ring. We're gonna thread it on to the right hand side, or sorry, the left hand side on top of that scale with the key ring in it. Okay. Then I'm going to grab it with my needle nose pliers and I am going to start twisting it. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, so that is your first key ring. Now I am going to put a second one on. Okay. Just as I showed you, open up that key ring your split ring pliers, thread it into the right hand side, and just enough to accept another scale. And I am going to add that on to the left hand side of that last scale. All right, and we're going to go back to this first scale. And we're going to put a key ring onto that. Okay. It'll become more evident as to why I added the scales on in just a minute. Okay. Open it up just enough that it'll accept another scale. Okay. And thread it on to the left hand side of that scale, but on top of the one with the big key ring in. should have something like this. Okay. Now we're going to go to this scale and we're going to add another key ring onto it. And by key ring, I mean these little scales, these little rings. Okay. Just like that. You open up just a little more. And then we're going to thread another one on there. All right. And then it will look like this. All right. 
Now we are going to go back to the same scale we just put on, and we're going to add a key ring onto the right hand side. Okay, open up the key ring, slide it in like we did with the other ones on the right hand side. Not enough to accept another scale. And we are going to take scale to the right of it and to the back side, right to the back side of that scale with the key ring sticking out. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to twist it inwards. All right, so it should look something like this. There we go. I always find that it's easier to go off to the left-hand side of the scales. You can go off to the right, you can go downwards, but never try to add your scales upwards from the one for the key ring. You can later on when you get better at it. It's just easier to work downwards. Okay, so this is the top half of a vest that I just showed on uh, my Facebook group, Illicit Metalwork. Uh, this was combined using the same technique that I showed to make this. So when I started this, uh, some really good advice for anybody who's trying to do the same thing. is so I started right here, just at the end of the V to go around the neck. I work my way downwards to the left, and then I work to the right. Okay, once you start working one way, the other way starts coming naturally. And it's kind of smart to make one big square rather than try to build it as a normal vest if you're into sewing, etc. That way you can kind of work on your dimensions from your chest and from the V of your neck all the way down to your waist. And you can make it as long as you want, as big as you want. It all depends on your size and what you prefer. To go around the arms, I just built a quick V. And for you, I would recommend maybe only going two or three scales down and then straight down and then kind of work your way smaller to bigger rather than try to go big and go smaller. It takes probably four to five times longer to take a scale off than it is to put the scale back on. Okay, once you get the whole vest done, then I start working up into the V. And that depends on your head size and your shoulder size, etc. And you probably want some padding underneath your shoulder. Okay, so now we need to learn how to edge our scale. What edging means is to add a layer of normal jump rings to the edge so that it doesn't start to like flail away. Because so I find that if you don't put the edging in, then your scales can become disorganized very quickly. So I'm just going to turn this inside out and I'll show you what I mean. So this side hasn't been edged at all. And you see how all the scales are just kind of floating around. They can easily get tangled and disorganized. But then you look at this side, and this goes around the arm, by the way. It's nice, it's smooth. The scales don't seem to want to flail about. They are very well organized. This is important when you're trying to walk around. It just looks a lot cleaner. It's like kind of hemming the edges of, of shirts. Okay. You also want to do this to the bottom because these can get easily disorganized and distorted. And later on, if you want to add on to it, uh, it makes it easier to figure out which one's the end. Like right here, I've been edging the bottom. And over here, it really isn't. This area, if I try to uh, disorient all the scales, they don't generally want to. On this side, I can easily pass the last scale under the first, and vice versa. It just looks a lot cleaner. So I'll get on to showing you how that is, and you're going to need 5 16 aluminum rings, or you can go steel. Just open jump. All right, so I've gone ahead and flipped this inside out for you. You're looking at the back side around the shoulder. Now you look at this scale, I already have some chains attached to it and it's sitting all nice and flat. It's 
not trying to flail out very much. And these ones, they're just kind of floating off in the breeze. Yeah, and that'll look really ugly when you're trying to go to an event or something or whatever. So we're going to learn how to clean it up. And again, this is called edging. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little jump ring that I've already pre-opened. I'm going to thread it into the top of that scale. There we go, just like that. And we're going to close it up. Always get in the habit of closing up your rings because they get a little finicky and they like to fall off if you don't. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add one to the next scale above it. Okay, thread it through. And I know in previous videos I've said don't use your fingers for this, but I actually find that using your fingers in this kind of ordeal is best. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and then that one becomes the bottom ring. Okay. Now, to make this a standard 4-in-1 chain mail, we are going to first thread this last jump ring into the top right key ring of that bottom scale that we're working on. Okay, and we're going to go underneath that scale. And this could be really tricky, even for the best of us. We'll thread it around, and then we're going to go through the bottom key ring of that upper scale. Okay, and you want to do those inside ones first, because those are the more difficult ones. Okay, and then we're going to add that red jump ring and that bottom red jump ring of the top scale. Okay. Just like so, and then we're going to go ahead and close it. Just like that. All right. Notice how that one's already in line. It's not flying around. That's ideal. And then we're just going to continue that above. And I'll show you one more on the side of the scales. And then I'll show you the bottom ones. And the bottom ones are actually a lot easier than the side ones. There's a lot less parts to deal with. Okay, so I just added a jump ring to the top of that scale and now I'm going to add to the bottom of that upper scale. Okay, just like that, slide it around and close it. All right, and then another open jump ring. And again, starting with the split rings. Because they are the more challenging ones. Catch those two split rings. And catch the jump ring and catch that other jump ring. All right, and then go ahead and close it. All right, let's see, I'll bring the camera up a little bit. Let's see it from a bird's eye view. Let's see, it's starting to look like a standard four in one. It's a little bit modified, but it actually looks really sharp. And these, these chains, and you can add chain mail onto them as well in case you're doing accents or arms, etc. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the back side, or sorry, the bottom side. All right, so this is the bottom one, the whole bottom row. And your first step is make sure that we're looking at the exact bottom scales. And only try to organize a couple scales at a time because you're gonna end up moving everything so there's no point in wasting energy. For this, I am going to use just black scale or black rings. It's extremely important that you make sure that your ring is completely closed. So if you have any little bit of open, they will fall off the scale. All right, so working from left to right, 
we're going to add one ring to the bottom of this scale. Slide it around. And close it. Okay. And then we're going to add one to this scale here. So now that we got two chains here, we're going to connect these two chains with the top two split rings of these bottom scales. Okay, and I'm going to work up from the bottom. Make sure that there's a little bit of extra space at these chains, just because it can be a little bit finicky in tight places. This is where fine motor skills really come in handy. So I'm going to feed from the bottom up. I'm going to connect that bottom jump ring and then that top split ring. I'm going to grab that left hand side of the chain and I'm going to do the same for the other side. All right. I would strongly encourage you to go back and review the video or just leave a comment down and say, hey, this doesn't make sense. Can you please do this in a little bit more detail? But it's a simple four in one. It's actually a little bit easier than a four in one because there's more space to see what you're doing. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this and it was very informative and we'll see you next time.